Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy. And today we're going to talk about Trissé, episode two. I'm very excited about this one because this one I liked a little bit more than episode one. And that's, I think, just because this episode felt a little bit more focused. Like when I was talking about episode one, I felt like it's not that it wasn't focused at all, but it just had a lot of elements going on. And I personally, when it gets to a scene where there's a dead ghost body and she has to solve that murder, she kind of solves it so quick and ties it into the railway murder and then that leads her to death and that leads her to the mayor and the uh, as ones and it's so much going on in the first episode a lot of world building that i felt like the story i just i was like trim one of these elements out and save it for another story um that was my only complaint about the first episode this episode has a different approach this one is more focused it's pretty much about one case it does uh, lead her to like a two or three beings that you know throughout the story but it still stays very focused on the victim of the race crash in the story but that's in the modern day but where this episode begins is actually is before that uh, before the modern day car crash scene and we're going to get into a black and white scene and spoilers so if you haven't seen episode two please go watch it now on netflix before you watch this because we're going to get into spoilers for this episode because i can't help myself there's a lot of stuff in the show i really like and i find fascinating and uh, and i'm going to you know get into it and i, I don't want to ruin this experience for you guys so if you're into anime you're into supernatural stuff all that i recommend you check out the show it's really really good and this episode uh i i would give a 4.5 rating out of five the first episode i give a four out of five uh pilots are tough i mentioned that in the first episode but this one I felt like is where the focus started to come in. And so now that, you know, the spoiler warning's out of the way, this episode opens up in the past in black and white. And why I like this so much. So this reminded me a lot of The Crow. Um, in The Crow, Eric Draven, uh, the main character played by Brandon Lee, um, in the movie, the director Alex Proyas, he wanted to direct the movie in black and white and then make all the flashbacks where Eric remembers Shelley Webster. He wanted to make all those in bright technicolor with the yellows, oranges, and reds, like all these very vibrant, uh, warm colors. And then the studio said, no, you cannot shoot uh, you know, this movie in black and white. Uh, we're not going to uh, you know, authorize that. So he then shot the movie mostly through filters to bleed out a lot of color so that the movie looked colorless in a lot of scenes, minus like a couple where you see a red light on or something. Uh, but for the most part, the movie does drown out the color and he had the rain. So that drowns out a lot of color too. So he really tried to make as close to black and white as he could while still following the rules of uh, the, you know, the studio. Um, and then in the flashbacks, uh, they were very bright colors. So I really, I've always loved that. And I always like that contrast. So they do that here. So the, the reason this, these scenes are in black and white and not in color, because if you remember in the first episode, Alexandra's remembering her last day with her mom and she could all the colors are there the colors of every flower you know that were around them the picnic the food they were eating all that stuff the little creek or river that was by them she remembered every detail in full color her mom's gone now so now all the flashbacks are in black and white I love that like I said it reminds me of the crow that transition of okay my loved one is gone now now I live in a world that is that there's more it's more direct and that really sums up the character of Alexandra because like I said she's very stoic and focused on the mission she wants to do as good of a job as she knows her dad did and she wants uh you know she wants to keep this balance her role is to do this and as of right now she's still young but she does not have a kid to pass this on to as of right now so like she's she's like you know I, I need to make sure I live up to this you know and I, I do what my you know make my father proud and my mother proud so now that her mom's gone She's remembering when she was a teenager and it's all done in black and white where she followed or she went with her father to a go-go club where a woman who looks like Electra from Daredevil, uh, you know, went and m massacred all these guys. And she thought she was after one guy, but it turns out she wasn't. There was uh, the bodyguards there. They actually were her real target because she cut all their hearts out and took the hearts with her. So, uh, so this is a, a case that her dad is working in the past. And in modern day, Alexandra has her two familiars, right? The ghost guys. But in the past, uh, her dad has two familiars and they're wolves. They turn into wolves, so like werewolf guys. So it's pretty cool. So I like the structure. I like that if there's a, there's a, a pattern to everything and there's rules to everything. And I, I imagine the comic book has that and that's where the show gets it from. But whoever came up with that from the comic to the show or whatever, I'm glad the show, if the comic did it, I'm glad the show is doing it too. Because I really like the rules. Like I like how in the first episode, Death was like, look, I'm sorry I commandeered this train to transfer souls. There's just a lot of souls and I needed to use it for my transgression or for crossing a line. Let's, you know, let me give you some information about an upcoming prophecy. 
that you might want to know about. And, and that kind of setting up the story that's kind of from these back, you know, flashback scenes here in black and white, because this case turns out it's going to be very important to the overall arc of the show and, and, and to Alexandra's past and her memories of her father. So this is a case she's working with her dad as a teenager. And this is where she learns the eye trick of cutting out the eye. And, uh, and then she puts it in a cup, spins it, pours the water on like a towel or something and holds the towel up. And you see the face of the Electra woman. She's like, this is our murderer. So Alexandra is actually the one who helps them, you know, uh, identify the, the murderer. And it's through tricks like her mom taught her and stuff too. Um, so I like that. I like that she's, you know, pulling from stuff her mom did, pulling stuff from her, you know, that her dad's teaching her. And she's making herself an asset to the team because, like I said, in modern day, there's four in the team. You know, we have Alexandra, Hank, her, which is her bartender guy and driver, and you have the two twins. But in the past, you have Alexandra's dad and his two familiars, and Alexandra is the fourth person on the team. So I, I like, again, the patterns, the repetition, you know, like everything rhymes, everything works. But that's why it's so dangerous that things are about to unravel soon with all the increase in all these cases. Um, that's going to throw everything off balance and that's not good for uh, a Lacan, which is, that's what Alexandra is. That's her title as the, you know, she's basically the, the, the gold statue in the middle of the scales holding the two, you know, good and evil or, you know, both worlds. And she's trying to keep them balanced and, and she's having trouble now because these cases are increasing. So that's the past story there, uh, where all these military men are getting their hearts cut out. So that's what they find out is those uh, bodyguards were ex-military. And that's going to tie into this Electra woman who is the killer. That's going to tie into her backstory, and we're going to get into that. Um, but and then it transitions to modern day again. And this is an episode directed by Mel Zwire, who is a phenomenal director. Uh, and I was so happy to see when Jay Oliva was putting together a team for these shows that he picked just top-notch talent, in my opinion. And Mel knocked it out of the park with this episode, uh, directing-wise, and everyone who worked on it and the writing, like, this episode is very strong. And it cuts to modern day where Alexandra is standing over a car crash, and there's, you know, it's just a car crash. And she's like, why was I called for this? And the captain's like, well, this is my nephew, Marco. He knew the driver of this car, and he says the driver has a girlfriend, and we can't find her. Um, and now this, and this kid is dead. We think there might be something going on here. And she's like, well, it could just be a kidnapping or whatever. Street race gone wrong, and he took his girlfriend. And they're like, maybe, but can you still look into it? I just have a hunch. And so she looks around the crime scene and starts seeing other uh, proof that there might be something supernatural going on. So she's like, okay, I think I know where to go, but I need to ask uh, Nuno for some an information. So she goes and finds Nuno, gives Nuno some candy, and uh, and finds out, you know, um, some, like, taking, she says, that, you know, Nuno's like, take another look at the body. They go and they see an electric bolt symbol on the back of the victim's head, the person who was in a car crash. And they're like, or I think it was that body, or maybe it was another body. I can't remember, because there, there's a lot of bodies in this episode. Um, but either way, Alexandra's following some clues uh, presented by Nuno, gave her, like, a little heads up. And now she has to go out and, um, and interact with these beings. There's one who's like a horse guy named, I think his name's Senor Armanas. And he's like a, a horse centaur dude. And he's sitting in the, in the tree and he's like very dark voice, very ominous. The scene is very unsettling because the music, it starts off and there's music. I really love the score in this scene. I, I had, I made a, I had a note and I, I'm, I'm glad I remembered to, to read that note just now because uh, that, that was so unsettling. This the scene starts off with music. And then the music starts to suck out of the scene and you just hear this bell type sound uh, in between words when the, the horseman, uh, Senor Armanas is talking like, and it's so unsettling. <laughs> like I was like, wow, that is great sound design. Cause it, it made my stomach sink like it big time. So I really like that. So she's talking to him and he's like, look, you know, uh, she's like, is your son involved in this? And he's like, you know, I can't keep track of my son, but you know, if he is, you know, feel, you know, go talk to him and you know, he'll do the, the right thing in the end hopefully and she's like I hope so and then she like I said she finds another body where there's an electric bolt on the back of its head and that leads her to this like executive dude this fat cat one percenter dude who lives up in you know works up in a giant tower like one of the tallest buildings in the city and he's like this big executive guy business suit and everything and he's not so nice to Alexandra and says, you know, like, I used to respect your father a little bit, but I'm kind of getting bored of the old ways and the rules and all that. So if you're going to investigate this scene where, you, you know, these bodies are showing up and you think it's my son, I'm telling you right now, if you keep pressing, I will find every, I'll break every rule, I'll cross every line and I'll get you. And Alexandra's like, okay, well, we'll see about that, you know, so she kind of departs and goes and tries to get back into the, the scene with the, the car crash. She comes across, she runs into the twins, her familiars, 
and they run into two female twins uh, who are also ghost-like beings too. And they say, hey, we know a little bit about this car race. We saw it happen. We saw who the driver was. Um, she's like, okay, was it, you know, Senor Armanis' son uh, and the horseman's son? And she's like, uh, they're like, yes, it is. And then he's like, and she, you know, Alexandra's like, okay, well then I'm gonna, let's like get me into the race. The two girls, the twin girls help her as she's driving. Um, the, the horse guy who's in a human form, he actually is losing the race. So he turns into his horse form and just starts, you know, bolting away and he's starting to get away. But Alexandra prepared for that and she knew that was going to happen. So she asked the ghost girls to pick, you know, they, she, the, the two twin girls go to each side of her car. They're floating because they're ghosts, they're apparitions. And they float up to her car and they help push her car past the horse guy <laughs> and beat him in the race. So after she beats Armanus' son, she's like, give me your, your treasure. I know what you have. Give it to me. And that's when she finds out that what he took was the guy's girlfriend. So the guy's girlfriend, she's alive. Uh, she doesn't really have any memory of how she was captured or anything, but at least they got her safe and they were able to, to put a conclusion to that story and that it was just a, a street race gone bad. The guy zigged when he should have zagged, I guess, and got, you know, got in a crash. Uh, and the girlfriend was just taken because she was there. But now Alexandra got her back and can return at least the girl to her family and bring a close to that case. Uh, and then meanwhile, after they do that, lightning strikes and that's when the kid uh, of uh, the fat cat he shows up and he turns into an, a, a blue electric guy and he's like i heard you came and uh you know questioned my father and he told you to piss off and you know it looks like you're still looking into the case and stuff and he's like so i'm just gonna show up and just and, and just kill you like we don't care about the rules anymore and so they get into a fight alexander fights with them as do the twin guys her ghost friends and uh, and all of them battle against this lightning kid and then uh, Nuno shows up actually at the last minute and, and intervenes and brings a golem with her. And the golem grabs the kid. They're standing in a puddle. And that's when Alexandra throws her knife. It goes through the golem and it's sticking out in front. And that's when Alexandra says, ground him. So the golem grabs the kid, pulls him into the knife and his electricity sparks out of his body. And they're standing in a puddle and the golem and the lightning boy explode. Um, and uh, thus killing the kid and pissing off the 1% fat cat guy who does show up at the end of the episode to threaten Trisse and say, all right, that's it. There's a war coming and now you've just pushed me to take a side because you got my son killed. And he, she's like, hey, he came and attacked me. It was self-defense. And he's like, I don't care. My son's gone and you're here and that shouldn't be the case. I love my son. I don't give a crap about you. So whatever this war that's coming, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm picking a side and, and we're gonna go for it and we're gonna come after you. So uh, so it doesn't end well, for, you know, at least on that note for Alexandra. So, uh, so that's where this episode ends, um, you know, and so she's been attacked and she's like, you know what? Okay, you wanna come at me? Fine, bring it, you know, just when, whenever you're ready. And so the fat cat guy disappears and that's kind of where episode two ends, much like a note uh, that the first episode ended on, which is, you know, the, the, the crap is going to still roll downhill towards uh, Alexandra. And no matter how much she tries to bring justice to things and help people, uh, things are always going to get messed up and, and seem worse. And they're going to tie back into the story from her past because we get to learn a little bit more about that Electra lady and more people are dying uh, that are showing up with their hearts ripped out and stuff like that. So we're going to get into more of that in the next episode for sure because there's more flashback stuff. So let me know what you think of episode two. I really like this episode. Like I said, I thought it was a little bit better than the first episode because I felt like it did juggle a lot, but it balanced it a little bit better and it, it was a little bit more focused. And again, I, like I, the reason I'm not giving it a five out of five is it's a 4.5 out of five is because I still feel like it could have used five or six more minutes to flesh out the, the lightning kid a little bit more and his dad just a little bit more. Um, I feel like that could have been built on just a tad bit more just to make that feel like it matters more. Um, but it's still again you get enough to where you understand and can connect enough dots and understand that you know things are going to go bad uh but but still i feel like just a little bit more and that would have helped my rating go up on this one uh, but those are just my thoughts what are yours let me know in the comments down below and we'll continue the conversation as always down there and i look forward to learning about uh things that i get wrong in this show or missed out on if you think i missed anything in the story that you want to talk about more also we can comment that down below so if you haven't seen the episode yet Below might have some spoilers <laughs> for sure, but try not to spoil episodes three, four, five, and six. We'll, you know, we'll do those in those episodes when uh, my reviews go up for those. So thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.